<laughs> and I remember standing in for Corey because he, he was couldn't stuck legally, in Canada. Yeah, oh he didn't God. have like a work permit, a work visa. He was like the secret, the secret guy. We were like, why are they hiding this guy? Yeah. I didn't from come us. till very late yep. into filming, which is why originally, like hanging out, mm-hmm. it, it was, was just, just us. us. Yep. you know, because I yeah, I stood in for him. I and then once I was in the wheelchair, I was like, oh. Okay, okay, this is how it's going to be. All right, that, that's right. And well, you guys got to rehearse, and I had... I, I told the story many times, but one of my favorite parts, the most memorable parts of filming the pilot was after... We'll get to this, but like after I'm rescued from the porta potty, yes. And Corey and I are like sit- standing on the after you go, tss, yes, which is so yes, good. The football field, and we're watching the emerald. Dreams yeah. got like water the football field, and that song With is that playing. Woman sitting and there. he and I were like, "This is insane, isn't it?" We're like, th- "We're going to remember this for forever." We're like, "This is Aww. special," and it was just the two of us. I'm like, "Yeah, this is really wild." Because it was a, it was we my first day of filming. You know, it's it, that's so. Cr- I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. In watching the pilot this morning at 5 a.m. because it also <laughs> brought up. We always would sort of make fun of Corey for doing his like I'm trying to be hot face but i'm also like 16 face and you're really 26 in real life <laughs> and it's like this thing he does where he like squints his eyes and he did it so many times in the episode I was like oh god i miss this so much <laughs> where he's like to- but it's totally accurate because i have a 17 year old nephew and when you take photos and all, they're always like pulling a face uh. and we used to give him so much shit for it and it was i think it was so good like so I right love on that face yeah you <laughs> Go know back exactly and look what for it, it now no yeah. you really do you'll know exactly what it is um okay this gymnasium scene it was like ah oh, yes nailed it um okay i want to talk about this very sweet rachel and finn scene that is i think the uh en- encompasses the showman's Title that was given to episode yes. two, right? And one, Very I think sweet. One, one of the most iconic scenes of Glee. Totally. Ever. I mean, they use it in the, all the promos, like on Amber's high note at the end of Somebody to Love, and right. then it's them kissing and it, Leah closing her eyes. And I, I thought it was really great. The funniest part of that was the mailman, <laughs> the mailman moment that they've played. They, they played throughout the whole episode with him explaining. You know, that's how he. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, keeps skeet, from skeet. skeet skeeting too early. Um, and that mailman face really became something that I would make. I don't remember if anybody else did this, but I would be like, can you do the face? And, and like oh, yeah. all the time, I would just make Corey do the mailman face. I remember face. you asking him Like, that. do it. Please do it. And he would do it all the time. And I was like, this is how it is. This is the most iconic thing of Glee. This is Glee. I also loved <laughs> I, I also for, had forgotten how dumb Finn was. He turns around <laughs> and she's like, are you hungry after that rehearsal? And turns around and just a full pick. And he's like, oh, yeah, I was wondering what that was for. <laughs> like uh, oh Finn's the best oh man oh god sweet Artie so the Glee Club's gonna hire a choreographer Dakota Stanley yeah and they need which a- um was very funny I remember shooting those scenes with him he is very very good and I like they're being like stop laughing again yep. you guys stop so, laughing so whenever I'm trying not to laugh I do a frown <laughs> and every time <laughs> just I was, look for the frown you yeah, guys <laughs> and every time I was in that I, I, in the background of that scene or whatever I'm <laughs> frowning so hard because he had so much dialogue he comes in and just insults everybody and yeah. we were trying to keep it together for him because like we don't want to ruin his take right because he needs to really get it all in one oh my god and he'd get to like Frankentine and all and and Frankentine that was the start of a huge oh, thing we I know Corey Frankentine, Corey Frankentine for, forever yeah Yep. That was the thing. Yeah. Did that happen? Did they write it in the script first or did Ryan call him Frankentine and then put it in the script? I think it was in the script first. Yeah, I think so yeah. too. Um, those were... Uh, the vocal journal, perform- the, the oh gratuitous vocal journal performance for nobody. Um, that Kurt was into Finn. Oh. Would that was that started in Oncofellas? Mercedes as Kurt. Like, wait, then who are you into? And he looks behind her, and the camera's focused on Finn. And then Rachel pops up, and she only sees Rachel, because she's not even considering that Kurt's gay. And she's like, it's Rachel? And he's like, uh, yes, <laughs> it is. Oh, that's right. It's like, oh my god, I forgot he was into Finn, and then yes. they become brothers. Well, <laughs> I never forgot that he was into Finn. 
Because it's funny to me. I like. I love it. I love that uh, yeah. story. It's just like uh, it's like your your crush. It's like yeah. the one crush that you're like unattainable, and then really unattainable because yeah. that would be gross. It's it's also like hard to separate. Um, <laughs> I think like us personally from the characters in a lot of ways during this time. We're like imagining like Corey and Chris together. I'm like this doesn't seem right. <laughs> I don't know about this. Yeah, totally. I feel like Corey loved that storyline though too. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? He played right into it. But Corey was down he for any anything. of it. Yeah. yeah. He and right I, into that's why anything. it was so much fun watching him like dance and things. Where like I know you're uncomfortable and you know you look a little crazy, <gasps> oh. but like you're going for it. Okay. I think. <laughs> Steve has been coming to us with questions each episode. And good I questions. feel like good questions. Too. The mom feels awesome. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, uh, do you remember I, one of our favorite things was to sort of give Corey sleep for the find me. Find me. <laughs> Which is, oh, we were like, I don't think it was so not great. <laughs> Find me. Because it does, also like doesn't sound like him. And it's no, his face during the number. We used to give him so much <laughs> for it. I love doing that number. I love we had done that number so much, too. We could do it in our sleep. Like, if they asked us to, to do it today, I could probably do it. Is it possible for you, for you to hear the original version and not sing the backgrounds to it? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm literally... It's always been pleated. Oh, yeah. And it was like this really thick, like sweater material cardigan. Yeah. I'm like, sure, I'll tuck it in. And then from there on out, every like Corey used to make jokes like, "Oh, I just want to make sure." Okay, yes, your sweater's tucked into your pants. Okay, great. Yep, always. Yes. Like when we would have new, like sometimes later on in the seasons, we would have new wardrobe people come in. I'd be like, performances pretending we we're on a bunch of Sudafed. Because you forget, I I remember like watching these performances back on YouTube and things, and you see like Corey has like this insane look in his eyes. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, oh yeah, I forget the plot point is we're all like high, co- yeah, we're, we're all, all high. <laughs> um, because it starts off with what Finn? He's super super tired. <laughs> the scene that you guys shot. Do you remember that scene um, when he's sleeping and yeah. you wake up and he has the drool? Was that I his choice? That. Do you remember? I, I don't remember whose choice it was, but I just remember them putting it on like, him ew. and like looking into the camera and doing it. It was just so ew. fun. It felt fun because. Yeah. Uh, do you have any other memorable episodes that you you well? Were, one, or thing like, I, one thing I one thing I was also the scene that I had with Corey. Oh yeah, because that's the first time I got to work with Corey, mm-hmm. and the thing about I'm sure you guys have talked about him a lot. Yeah. But the thing about that scene was that was the moment I realized how talented he was because he was not that character at all. That was a transformation that Corey made. Mm-hmm. And as you know, you knew him even better than yeah. I did. But out of that character, you know, he was a young man who was, in, you know, independent in his life. He wasn't a teenager at all. And I remember right. asking him how he did it because I thought it was incredible. And he told me that he would just empty out his head. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yep. And you can see him yeah. empty do it. it. Yeah. And I just – I. Mm. I mean, I playing with him was so much fun because it was so specific and it was so deliberate, but it was almost so good that sometimes I worried it was underestimated mm. how uh, how much thought he had put into creating somebody who was seemingly without thought. Yeah, yeah. it's hard. It's like <laughs> yeah. playing a dumb so blonde. It's yes. really, really hard. Right. right. Yep. And um, it's easy to put it on, but to actually embody to it. Embody it's it. Like, yes. He. Yeah. He was. <laughs> As I watched, as like season one went on, he Finn got dumber and dumber. Right. <laughs> they like wrote to it. They're like, "Oh, brilliant! We'll just take it." And they're like, "He's like, ooh, gummy bears." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, it's what? true. I remember doing that scene with him when he comes in, and I give him the medication. And there's a there's a there's a moment when they cut to me because I'm looking at his face, <laughs> and I remember I was just like. What is he doing? It's incredible. <laughs> you know, it was just such a fascinating performance. Yeah. The Hilarious. way you would even. And I also remember that was the last thing, me on the stage singing, dancing with myself, it was the last thing we shot that day. And we had to go to New York mm-hmm. for upfronts. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, oh my God. That gosh. was the, yes, that was the beginning of Upfronts. Yeah. And I just remember that the day was so long <laughs> that now when I watched that, my mustache had started to grow back. <laughs> so in the morning, I would shave every morning. Like Corey and I would take eight years to shave. We were right. called the Olympic shavers. They would just stand in the makeup trailer yeah. and with the thing and behind us while we were getting ready and yeah. just shave for like a half hour. Eight hours. Because I was so anal about it, I took for forever. And Corey was also a, like an adult at that point yes. that had to shave and that my beard grows back pretty quickly yeah and love Corey was so good in this episode how and he had a make, lot to do and also yeah he did have a lot to do and he was very good in this episode how did how he how he made singing to a sonogram work i'll never know never never also but i bought it how uncomfortable and genius of singing you're having my baby at a table Ugh, that was so uncomfortable but it was watch. so good you're having my baby See, i think i think back <laughs> in the day when it was on i just felt uncomfortable i'm like this is just weird now i really appreciate how odd it is it's like i Kicked out of the his house. But it's so sad. Uh, what a this good is scene. my quote of the oh, episode. Okay. Like I needed my mom because oh. she's like you knew. Yeah, and she's losing it. Yeah, oh, so good acting. Some some. It was a good scene. I like. Yeah. I like. It was watching very. That. I remember. They all had such good everybody. chemistry. Yeah. Side note. Corey has chemistry with everyone. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Like he dealt it's with he's everyone. He's a really in the- nice yeah. human and he's open and, you know, and yeah. that made you feel good. Okay. I mean, I think that was the second time I'd ever worked with Corey. Right. So, and then, um, oh. and yeah, I mean, so, and it was the first emotional thing that we had to do, obviously. But I do remember sitting, I was, I don't know, I was, uh, preparing and I do that in air quotes um, <laughs> for crying which if you know you have to go from zero to 60 mm-hmm. right and so it's um, I, I mean I, I don't even think I'd met I think Corey may have might have come by the set during the pilot I don't even know if I met him oh because he wasn't in the montage no, she, yeah, she, she was just little Corey a little Corey, little little Corey yeah. and dr- truck driver he was a. I, I think he's yeah, hose guy. He, oh, yes. that's right. He's spraying hose guy. Yeah. Hose guy. That guy. Trucker hat I met guy. Him yeah, we were right. Well, with him. You, yeah. Yes. Oh, you got. Oh, Corey be, and I were in a scene with him because he um, the football field. Right. Mm-hmm. The football field. Right. 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 And leader Finn, and that's what leaders do. Poor Finn. Finn's always being manipulated. I mean, but also brilliant on Corey Monteith that like he he created this character to be the most vulnerable and gullible and dumb character ever yes. but the most likable person in the and whole world and then when he gets real he gets really real yeah. Yeah. that was the so best good. switch so good victory um, Quinn is yeah. back in the Cheerios uniform with a big pregnant belly I think <laughs> Sue's journal entries are the top best. three favorite things on top the show. Three well, Ian Brennan. Yeah. Okay, name your top five. Oh, God. Um, what? Watching you, you dance is a top five. Yes, sure. thanks, guys. Yes, definitely. Wow, that has guys. been a recurring watching, theme. Watching Corey oh God, freak thanks. out and throw things is one of my oh, other yeah. favorites. I, after watching Bust Your Windows, Austin then told me the next day that he watched that number <laughs> several times well, just to watch you. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was at the prime know, of like, so I'm early. still dancing and I'm still killing it. You are still killing it. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah. You're, there's something you about it. watching you dance, though. I know. Thanks, where guys. You it's have this like, magnetism. I wish I still had that. You, you do. do. I don't. You, you can't definitely lose that. do. And then, oh, there's a couple things that happened in this episode mm-hmm. where Corey was leaving the room and he starts kicking, thi- like, yeah, kicking yeah, yeah. things Kick and all the chair, that. Yeah. And that became a thing. And that became it's a thing. Favorite. Yeah. It's my favorite. <laughs> and he, there was, so done with you guys. <laughs> there was always this joke. And I don't think you guys ever even knew we would do this, but when he would like storm out or something, he would always go, not like this, like from the Matrix. <laughs> not like this. And it finally got written in a couple of like, years later. And that was the beginning because he walks out, like slams the door, like, not like this. <laughs> and, but like, he's so big too and this tiny little chair just like, doo, 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 like yeah. that's over. I'm just remembering all these like insight. So Amber sings and oh, I'm yeah. telling. Um, that was one of the ones fine. that didn't feel no. as good. But you know which one did feel good to me? Hello, I love you. 
I love watching Corey get a whole dream sequence, huge number. Yeah. It's just my favorite because then you have all the hot cheerleader Cheerios in, in the oh, number yeah. as well. I also really liked his whole storyline. I liked watching him, like Finn, sort of go through the confusing things with Rachel and him just not getting sure. a lot of it. And then, oh God. Saw the, saw the world outside of Glee. And then like everybody started getting like you know, a little ambitious as well, which like, as you do, we're getting offers left and right. And so people started to create their own lives outside of Glee, which was like, it became, it started to become a little bit like work. And for me, that lasted for a little, quite a little bit. And then I didn't pop back to like appreciate the show until like season five. Yeah. Because you knew it was getting towards the end. Yeah. And, and to be honest, like after Corey passed, like it brought us together in a different way and in a way that reminded us why we were there and what we were doing. And, and like, you know, he gave us that, like we all, we like, I, at least for me personally, I came back around and I was like, oh, I, you know what I mean? Like I get what's important and I get what we're doing. And that for me was like really, uh, really important. So physically grueling and we had done the tour. So I think season three, we felt more in sort of a rhythm. And I feel like the days weren't as long. And like Jenna said, it did feel more like a job. And in season four... With Corey passing, it did feel more like um, less about the show and the work and more about us being there for each other, not just the cast, but the crew, all the production team. And so that became more, uh, that was a whole separate experience. Right. And then season five. And that's, and I was like, yes, that's what, that is what it feels like. He's like, yeah, it's starting to feel like that, isn't it? Where you could tell it was coming to an end Mm -hmm. and so like everyone was just sort of like, is this good anymore? (laughs) And so it was like, you know, in the beginning when you're really proud of the episodes, you're proud of the impact it's having and that's a whole different feeling. And then towards the end where, especially, I, I mean, after Corey passed, it was a whole different thing where the show was no longer the same show and I think it's hard to recover from that (laughs) understandably and I think it was just sort of like okay how do we end this (laughs) and I would have done it forever but I think for I can't imagine you know having to be the writers during that time and having to sort of and Ryan having to re-navigate how the show was supposed to go so I season three was a changing point yeah I was excited for that one. Yeah. What I didn't remember was um, the Open Your Heart borderline. Uh, yes. And I forgot about all the different Madonna looks. Like, I liked that mashup a lot. I love I it. I really loved it. And I thought it was really well done, really, uh, like, shot well, directed well, act, like, acted and sang well. And, like, it was a really good mashup. And then just, like, walking down the halls and seeing all the different Madonna looks, I was like, this is just so freaking brilliant. Like I had chills. I still have chills. So good. I forced Austin to watch it with me today because oh. he admitted he had never seen that one. Okay. And he was saying, you know, there's something about watching the two of them perform and mm. like their innocence together. Mm. Like that is so um, endearing. And like you yeah. just want to watch them. They're so good together. He's like, their chemistry during this song is so, He's so ridiculous. Good. I yeah. mean, when he is playing the drums and staring at her singing in the top yeah. of the number in the choir room, I was like, ooh. Yeah. Like, and it then was it just ends so with well that look. Yes, yes. I mean, exactly. That sexual tension. All the good feels in the whole world. Jesse's girl, I do not remember this performance at all. Really? <laughs> I was totally shocked that this is the performance. What do you mean? I just, I do not remember this happening. I obviously How did you think it happened? We did it on tour. I remember the tour. That's what (laughs) I I sort of replaced the memory. And I haven't, I think also it's like a soft spot for me with Corey with this song. And so Mm -hmm. it's probably like one of those unresolved things I haven't dealt with where I don't listen to this song. And I I almost fast forwarded through this number and I was like, no. The number is so joyous and like the, I also think Finn and Rachel are at their best and most charming in this episode. Yep. yep. And it w- it's just so enjoyable to watch him perform it where there's nothing going on except him just being so charismatic. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I just loved, like, again, this is like the, the Fonzie touch, like putting her behind that, um, you know, like the changing screen and so like him singing to her and then like him playing the drums. You always want to watch Corey like play and play, like play the drums and sing at the same time. Like, it's just, that's Finn's like sexy moment. And then like, you just watch him charm the shit out of every America and the whole world, you know, like, no, truly. I was like, I, and, and then though, like, of course with the, with the tour and this is like his number with like, you know, the jacket on when he wears his McKinley jacket and it just gives me all the feels. And I just, it makes me sad and really happy at the same time. Yeah. I was really happy. I stuck with it because it's, it's just so joyful. Me, me too. I also, and I wonder if, if they, they honestly, named Jesse St. James Jesse so he could sing this song eventually. Yeah, I I wondered that too. I'm sure a lot of people right. have. Like, did they have the foresight right. of eventually we need to... I feel like Brad might have done that. Yeah, probably. He probably. probably that was probably his suggestion to have Jesse's yeah, girl, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. It's such an iconic number. But then we get... A- like, we've been playing these characters since the pilot. Right. And you hope and they hope they're doing it correctly. And there was a a scene we're filming in the choir room and I believe Corey and Leah, I don't know if they had any lines, but they weren't the focus of the scene. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I had never seen Corey do this before, but he got up to Alfonso and he's like, Hey, so he's like, I know you probably don't know this because this episode hasn't aired yet. And it happened last episode, but like, something's going on between Finn and Rachel. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like he's like, I know this isn't really my place, but he's like, I just feel like um, you should just, just in case they need it in editing, like get a shot of us looking at each other um, for a connection. Yeah. And I don't remember what scene it is, but it's in there where they like glance at each other. And I was like, ah, there it is because to see oh. he's paying attention, you know, the, the storyline from episode to episode. And right. well, he always did. He was very specific about what he, what he was doing and how his character was fitting in. And, and that I always really respected about him. Yeah. And um, just things, you know, the show can be so silly that you forget where, you know, it's a, he's a professional. We're all professionals and it, going up to a director is like a scary thing. And I think for us, we were yeah. also new where it didn't right. necessarily feel like something we could do. Right. And he did it because he cared and he was right. He was right too. No, I mean, he's totally right too. And it's, I feel like we would have seen him direct an episode at some point. Totally. You know? Absolutely. Um, but that's a good memory, Kevin. Thanks. I I think about that a lot, actually. Because <laughs> yeah. it was one of those things where it was the first time it happened. Right. Where one of us like went up to somebody, because there's the old cliche of mm. like, also, when we were like flying first class for the first time, for most oh, yes. of us, that's right. Nice. We were savages. No, but then the flight attendants were so mean to us, savages. Because if we were too loud or something, they came up to us and be like, um, "Where's your guardian or parent?" Oh, like, yes, no. they it's used just to ask us. us. Yeah, it's us. They're like, "Well, why are you up here?" I'm like, "Excuse me, this is our ticket. It's been paid for by us. You don't know any different." And some of us are Fox. thirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Talk to Corey. He's forty. <laughs> He's our guardian. That tall guy. And like the Fox PR people would just like sink into their seats. Oh, that's hilarious. I mean, there were times where we'd have like out the money. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you an embarrassing story about. Um, <laughs> Please do running into a cast member. I so I'd done the whole thing and it, and and I visited a couple times. You know, after that. Because I was working on um, United States of Terror, so I was came by a couple. And times. you would sneak us in United States of Terror. Yeah, but anyway, I was in line at a Hollywood Starbucks, and right in front of me was Corey Monteith, and I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to say hi. And but I didn't say hi. I I was I was refilling my iced tea because I'd already drank an entire giant iced tea, but so there's still ice in it. And so instead of saying hello to him, I just went like. I clunked his butt with my iced tea cup, and when he turned around, I went, oh, excuse me, and he had no idea who I was. No! No! And then you have that – if that's ever happened to you, you have like you have like maybe five seconds to, to, like recover. to recover. And maybe you're like, five. okay, you've got it. you got it. Now just act normal and say your name and blah, blah, blah. And I just didn't. <laughs> and so I became – 
I was just some crazy man who clunked his ass with an iced tea cup. And I and then you also have time later when you're waiting for your drink to also yeah. do it. But by that time, I thought, no, no, I'm done. So, yeah. Oh my! Did God. he just turn around and look at you and look? No, back? he was very. Nice. <laughs> yeah, he must have been. No, he was just sort of like, what's that all about? And then, yeah, yeah. Oh my um, god! So yeah, I was just one more crazy person in Hollywood that day. <laughs> That's it's okay. Brilliant. Also, I'm sure like we all used to grope each other. So like, I'm sure Corey was just used to being having people groped. clunk him with ice yeah. tea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On his no, booty. but not not in that that particular <laughs> store. You got it a was, sweet face you know <laughs> oh i felt really bad for him that day i thought uh, why did i do that it's so canadian he's nice. he didn't care <laughs> but like just once in your life just say hello you know what I mean? right you that's get all you have to do go, yeah we worked together yeah, once yeah, yeah. they'll just, remember you know, they'll remember yeah. mm. oh yeah great no, yeah no. i don't know why uh, because i just thought we were fast friends apparently because <laughs> we both were there in the same room when for 12 hours yeah when i'm behind a piano and <laughs> right. they're doing you did have glasses and your hair I, slicked uh, down yes and i'm behind a piano <laughs> uh, you know that's <laughs> so i had nothing to do with that number except pretend to play the piano so. did you Epicness. Anyway, sorry, Maddie, you were saying. No, I, I, I kind of lost it um, on when Corey said, uh, you know, I've never had a, a role model. Ugh. He was talking about Mr. Shu and just kind of like someone to look up to. And I just lost my shit. I was just like, wow. I just, I wasn't expecting that. I was just, I missed that kid. Yeah. Yeah. I, I forgot. I forgot what happened in that scene. I remember singing that song and I felt the exact same way. He started talking. I was like, oh, God. Yep. Because in so many ways, like, you were in real life our teacher, our leader. You, right. It was always you talking at us. And, you had, <laughs> and, like, I'm sorry. and we were just punks. No, we were like, give you something. <laughs> and then I feel like within very much like in the show, like within the Glee Club, us kids it was very much Corey and leah Mm -hmm. and to in retrospect after you know what's happened in real life has happened to see him say that to you and how we all feel about him it was just a very it was much more than just the show and i'm sure you felt that too it was just like getting punched in the gut over and over Mm -hmm. there was a lot of that in this episode and i i mean the first time i lost it was when Finn, right before the performance, goes to Rachel and says, I love you. Yeah. And, mm. and and it was one of those moments where Jen and I talk about where I can watch it objectively. And objectively, I was like, I, okay, I get it. I get, like, I wish I could watch this show unbiased sometimes. Right. And that was one of those moments where I was just in it. And then from that point on, it just carried through the rest of it. It's like, Ugh, Corey breaking my heart. <laughs> I know. Yes, well, that so number right. too. Uh, that, those journey numbers always really get me, and and it's true. Like, there's nothing like the new direction just having a ton of heart and singing their hearts, their little out, you know, like underdog hearts out. It really gets me every time. Um, I also feel like 